with the humbling experience to be given a platform to address the most educated people in Africa. If you go online, you will see that Zimbabwe is rated as the most educated nation on the continent. That's you guys. Anyway, let me start by telling you the, the real reason why I'm here. Uh, though it's really because of the delicious food you just had, I'm not going to tell you that. So I'll just go ahead and tell you the other reason that I just made up. Uh, part of, what I, part of uh, why I'm here is because I stood on the shoulders of giants. And uh, I believe that's how I got noticed. And I'd like to thank the giants on whose shoulders I stood. People like uh, Pastor Tommy Tuchel and Tim Pickers who are the, uh, the founders of Emerging Ideas. People like the Dan Paso, Isaac Klang, and so on. But uh, the other reason why I'm standing here today is not because I made the airtime vending machine, contrary to what m uh, most of you are probably thinking. And it's not because I'm some kind of a super genius. No, in fact, I'd like to think of myself as someone with an average IQ. And uh, for those of you who did a bit of math in high school, if you were paying attention, you probably know what this means. The graph of normal distribution. I believe I'm somewhere within the average region there. And I'm sure we can all agree that uh, it is everybody's dream to be as close to Einstein as possible and as far away from Homer Simpson as you, as you can possibly get. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, I'll tell you the real reason why I'm standing here today. It is simply because I chose to start complaining. But what is it that I was complaining about? Let me give you a background story. It all started when my, uh, my dad was becoming more and more dependent on me whenever he wanted to uh, top up his airtime. Because of his deteriorating vision, he couldn't clearly see the tiny print on a recharge card. So I was his eyes all the time. But both of us knew that uh, I wasn't always going to be available to help. So that worried me to some extent. And in another incident, I had to rush down from one of those tall buildings in town, all the way to the ground floor, waited for the traffic to clear, just to get to the other side of the road where the airtime vendors were. That made me realize the need to automate or replace the traditional eye straining method of uh, airtime recharging and to make it available in places where vendors are usually not allowed. And that's how uh, the vision started. Uh, I could see the machine in my mind before I even knew how I was going to make it. And uh, you know, uh, turning the raw idea into the actual thing wasn't a walk in the park. For starters, I had no money. And not only that, but the very environment I grew up in has always been discouraging. The people have embraced, uh, they've embraced failure and mediocrity. As a result, they've got a negative mindset. So the bigger your vision, the crazier they think you are. The living standards are demotivating, and they will kill your zeal to make a positive change. Just 10 hours of continuous supply of electricity during daytime is an unforgettable experience. But I realized that uh, complaining about any of these things wasn't going to get me anywhere. It wasn't going to solve the problem at all. What I needed to do was to stop complaining and do something about it. And the moment I stopped complaining is the moment that the most amazing things started to happen. I started seeing the first pieces of the solution. And as I maintained the mindset of not complaining, more and more pieces started coming to me. And after putting all the pieces together, the airtime vending machine was born. Yes, the machine itself is a reality simply because I chose to stop complaining. I remember salvaging some of the components from what my friends had thrown away as junk. I spent countless sleepless nights working on the project because nighttime was the longest time we had uninterrupted uh, supply of power. So many times I burnt my fingertips with the soldering iron 
trying to make all the circuits work. I always did everything I could each night before power went out at around 5 a.m. And you know, that uh, method of, uh, the way I used to work kind of upset my parents because I used to uh, sleep during the day. And uh, I'm sure it probably upset the witches because I would stay up all night. And I probably interfered with their operations. But anyway, I had decided, I had made up my mind not to complain anymore. In my opinion, complaining only obscures the solution. The problems we face in life and the consequential inconveniences are really not the enemy. They are only there to tell us that something needs to be done to make life better. Sort of like a feedback mechanism to inform you when it's time to make a change. After all, the story of mankind has always been about finding solutions to overcome his environment. However, today's society has been plagued by what I call the complaining disorder. And here is what it has done to us. First of all, it causes the inability to generate solutions. When you are in the complaining mode, your mind cannot uh, conceive solutions for the problems that you are facing. And that leads to stagnation in scientific development, which ultimately causes total dependence on foreign technology. But we are living in the 21st century, the information age, an era in which we have all the technological advantages, and yet we are still not exploiting those advantages. Much of the hard work has already been done, been done for us by the great scientists who came before us. They had no Google, they had no Wikipedia, or any of these knowledge portals that we today take for granted. They only worked with what they had in their time. We, on the other hand, we literally have almost all the information we need in our pockets right now. And yet, we still can't come up with a lasting solution for something as simple as our own traffic lights. Wait a minute. I thought we were the most educated people in Africa. How is all that education translating into observable scientific progress? Now, what you're looking at here is a detailed, high-resolution image of what my neighborhood looks like every day at 6.30 p.m. <laughs> and I stay right about there. Can you see that? Of course you can't. That's because we never have electricity every day around that time. We've all had an acute shortage of electricity for quite a while now. And we still don't have a solution for that. We are the intellectuals. We are the engineers. The scientists. Who are we waiting for? And speaking of electricity, I used to complain a lot about how they unfairly deprived us of power when the guys on the other side of the road always had constant supply. Actually, I still feel the guy who pulls the switch owes me at least about five years of my life. But I decided not to complain about it anymore, and I de decided to do something about it. At the end of the day, it inspired me to... Uh, come up with a new concept of generating electric energy using a resource that we are wasting away every day. The concept is still yet to be declassified, so stay put. But don't get me wrong, this is not about traffic lights or electricity, but it's about a mindset, a chronic way of thinking that has made us to believe that we can't. We can't because uh, we don't have the financial resources, we can't because uh, of the unfavorable economic conditions. We can't because so and so wouldn't give us the funding. They say where, the, where there's a will, there's a way. And none of those things can stand in the way of willpower. All we need to do is stop complaining and learn to work with what we have. 
Jesus once told the story of three servants who were given talents by their master. After going away for a while, he returned and uh, found out that two of his servants had doubled what he had left them. When he asked the third servant why he didn't do anything with what he had, here's what he had to say. Master, I knew that you are a hard man, reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not cultivated. And I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the earth, and here it is. Who knows? Maybe this guy was right. But the point is, he still didn't make any progress with what he had, even though his reason for complaining may have been genuine. Tony Robbins, the guy who stole my speech, he once said, if you want to be successful in life, find out what failures do and don't do it. And clearly, complaining is one of the things failures do best. Trust me, I used to be one. When you're driving at night, your car's headlamps only light up the road up to about 50 meters ahead. So, if you're going on a 1,000-kilometer journey, all you need to see is the 50 meters ahead of you. When you cover that, the next 50 will unveil, and then the next, and the next, and the next, until you get there. That's what I call working with what you have. Or you could say, Man, it's so dark. I can't even see anything beyond 50 meters. And I assure you, you'll stay right where you are. I believe Zimbabwe is a first world country. Honestly, I do. It's just that it is inhabited by people with a, with a third world mindset. And that's why we've stayed where we are for so long. Daniel Chingoma made a helicopter out of scrap metal. And yet, you only went to school up to Form 3. And you've got college graduates with degrees in engineering. We have never made even a mousetrap and are working in Chinese shops. Why is that? It all goes back to the complaining disorder. We are always, comp always complaining about things that we don't have. We really need to start working towards development with the little that we have. And that requires us to stop being so negative all the time. We all like roses, but we don't like thorns. But ju that, that's just how life is. Wherever there are roses, there are thorns. So instead of complaining, that roses have thorns, why don't we change our mindset and start appreciating that thorns have roses? I rest my case. Thank you.